So I'd like to uh, welcome Rachel Gross, who's a graduate student with Hong Wei Chow at the University of Iowa. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Louise. Um, so like she said, I'm Rachel Gross, and I'm a master's student at the University of Idaho, and today I'll be talking to you about molecular strategies to combat pale cis nematode in potato. So I know everyone else has already given a little bit of background, but for anyone who might have joined us, um, in case you didn't know, uh, PCN is a small worm-like animal that lives in the soil, and there's two important species uh, that is found in the U.S., but my talk will be focusing on Globidera pallida. The feeding on the roots of the nematode, it causes significant yield losses, and there's currently no resistant potato cultivars in the U.S. to Globidera pallida. So why is this a problem? Potato is highly susceptible to Globidera pallida, and crop rotation is not an effective uh, method currently because the trap crop lychee tomato is not, uh, or it is a regulated species because it is a weed, and there's very limited effective pesticides that are legally on the market, and these are very expensive and it's transmitted via contaminated soil, which is pretty easy to move soil from one field to the next. So before I get into my research, I just wanna give you a little bit of background about plant immunity. So this here is a rough outline of a plant cell. And when the nematode comes in contact with these cells, it secretes inside the cytoplasm small effectors, which are just small proteins. These effectors are responsible for uh, enhancing pathogenicity of the uh, pathogen, and the plant interacts with those by producing R proteins or R genes. And these R proteins are responsible for identifying effectors. If just one R protein can interact with an effector, it will elicit what's called the HR cell death or hypersensitive response. This is a controlled cell suicide mechanism that the plant utilizes to control and contain any infection that might come into the plant. So what's the solution for PCN? My project is focusing on finding resistant pro genes or uh, R proteins that I talked about previously. If we're able to find these, then it uh, limits the dependency on pesticides and it can quicken breeding efforts by utilizing PCR screening rather than uh, long field trials. And this can also be utilized in genetic engineering to put into multiple different cultivars, which can limit the uh, incompatibility between different species if we find an R gene in a different species. And also, as we all know, potato is very difficult to breed uh, because of tetraploidy and just issues <laughs> with all of that. So my, how I started my project was instead of looking for an R gene and then screening it against uh, Globidera, I looked for the effector first and then hoped to find the R gene from the effector. So I started with all of the proteins that are known to be found in PCN and then did a series of selections. The first selection was looking at does this protein contain a secretion peptide? A secretion peptide is a small fragment of the protein that or tells the cell that this protein needs to be moved outside of the cell. Because effectors are not kept within the nematode, but rather secreted into the plant cell, this is a key uh, feature that most effectors do contain. The next selection was for enzymatic function, and this was just to help us on our screening processes. It's easier to screen for enzymatic function than other types of proteins. And then the final selection was looking at its predicted function, would this potentially enhance pathogenicity of the uh, PCN? And that is just another key, like this is most likely an effector. So what I did was I injected these proteins uh, potential effectors into a test plant and just look to see what happened. Now we were not expecting to find this at all, but as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, GP0400, that's one of the potential effectors, that necrosis area there is indicative of HR cell death response. This was a very strong response and it showed up in less than 24 hours. And so we're like, whoa, 
this, there's something here in the plant that is identifying this protein that we've injected and is turning on the HR cell death pathway. That's a good key that there's probably an R protein in there. So what we had to do next was say, okay, well, hold on. What if this protein is just a toxin that the nematode is secreting to protect itself against other pathogens like bacteria? So what we did was we did an assay where we used SGT silenced plants and SGT, when it gets silenced, it effectively shuts down the immune response of a plant. So it can no longer turn on the HR cell death pathway. The, so what we were hoping to see is that in the SGT silenced plants, there was no more cell death because it couldn't turn on its immune response versus if it's a toxin, it would still cause cell death in a non-immune functioning plant. So what you can see here, is on the left is the control plant so it's not silenced and we still see cell death which is great and then over on the right in the SGT silence plant there's no cell death so in conclusion GP0400 is not a toxin so this is another key factor that this is most likely an effector that we're dealing with so then we had to do now that we're pretty sure that this is an effector we now have to find what proteins does this interact with so how we did that was we took isolated GP0400 protein and we mixed it with all of the proteins that we could extract from different plant species at that time and mixed them together in a tube. Then we selected for only proteins that would interact with GP0400 and then using special equipment, we were able to identify what those interacting proteins are. And here's a list of some of the proteins that we found that are of interest to us and we're doing further studies on now. In lychee tomato, we found that there's an osmotin-like protein. And osmotin is just a protein that was shown to inhibit pathogen growth in other plant species. In potato, we found a wound-induced proteinase inhibitor. And this is interesting because when a nematode infects, the stylet pierces the cell and that is wounding. So maybe the potato is expressing that protein to, uh, in response to the nematode's wounding. Also in potato, we found an auxin response factor nine, which is a potential transcription factor and transcription factors are responsible for initiating uh, the transcription of a bunch of other genes. So maybe this is like the top of the pyramid that will then uh, cause a cascade of other proteins to be uh, expressed. Uh, also in potato, we found another osmotin protein and then in tomato, because my lab works heavily with tomatoes, we decided, well, let's see what tomato proteins get back to us. We found a G-type lectin S receptor like kinase, and it's a really long word, but this was shown in brassica species to be involved in defense response. So what does this all mean? If we are able to isolate a new R gene, that's effective against PCN, this will quicken breeding efforts and can be used in genetic engineering. If we don't find an R protein, we'll at least find the target of the effector. And that target is gonna be what's the effector shutting down in the plant to enhance its pathogenicity. So that will just help expand our knowledge about how PCN is attacking the plant. And this can also be used in genetic engineering and breeding efforts to manipulate that pathway in the plant so that it's less susceptible to the effector. So I'd just like to thank everybody from my lab and uh, my funding resources. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. Yes. So it looks like you found an R gene possibly in the Cochea of Tamiana. What are your plans to then try to find the corresponding gene? Well, um, we did do the injections. I didn't show them on this presentation. We also did the same test in tomato, and we got the same response. So we're not really focusing on Necrociana because it is a model plant. Um, we're going to see what we can get with potato and lychee tomato first, and hopefully find the origin from there.